Okay, so I'm Pavel. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. In addition to what Maria said, it's, um, I have been working in Tallinn since 2011. And since then, I have been, in, have been involved in uh, multiple projects here. Um, but in the scope of current webinar, I'm going to mention only the last two. And yeah, Tallink is a very big company, but the uh, IT department is not that big. It's uh, around 80 people, uh, out of which only like uh, 15 are internal developers. And uh, my previous project was a desktop booking system for Tallink fellowships. This was a very big project among a lot of people, and this was also the first project uh, when we started using the actual code reviews. Uh, previously, we didn't have this as a common practice at all. And in that project, I was dealing with a backend development uh, involving some coding in Java and a little bit of Scala. But the current project, uh, my current project is the, uh, once again a booking system, but for mobile devices only. And this project started over a year ago, and it was meant only for mobile web browsers. Uh, it was using the same backend as a desktop booking system, and was purely written and is purely written in JavaScript. Uh, we wrote it in Angular using ECMAScript 5, but recently migrated most of the project to ECMAScript 6 or 2000, whatever it's called, 2015. Um, yeah, the, the idea behind the move was uh, not only to have like a cleaner code, but also be ready to move to Angular 2 if whenever we decide to do that. Um, yeah, and recently we started writing some native applications for the same booking system. Uh, they have some additional functionality on top of the, uh, what already exists. Um, and yeah, on the current project, I'm a developer slash team lead. And I'm going to show you um, the flow uh, of development that we used uh, before we starting, uh, we discovered the app source. And uh, yeah, we use uh, Jira issue tracker and um, all of our development is split into stories, which are in turn split into tickets. And here you can see our Kanban board. Um, so yeah, we moved the tickets from left to right, from to do and to finally done. Um, and then the ticket actually uh, moves through the Kanban board columns and then reaches the review column is uh, uh, is when the work that has been done by developer has to be reviewed. But we are not only doing code reviews. So re review means not only code review, but also um, uh, UI reviews, uh, some maybe manual testing, and yeah, of course, code review. Um, so when this uh, mm, review mm, is reached, like the, the, the code is ready for review, uh, the developer has to uh, somehow broadcast that, uh, that uh, someone has to review the work that he has done. And uh, any developer, uh, on the team uh, needs to uh, is like uh, is allowed to take the, the review and the broadcast process is necessary because uh, in Jira it's a little bit hard to to track uh, what exactly has been called review as I said before we are using uh, different sorts and there's like UI reviews as well and then uh, something else so it's a little bit hard to just understand using only Jira uh, what is not yet called reviewed. Um, and yeah, like uh, in every, we, we use uh, Mercurial uh, version control and uh, every commit name actually contains a Jira ticket number, as you can see here. Uh, this way it's uh, easy to find all the um, commits related to some task uh, using any, any, any tool actually. Uh, so, uh, after like the review is, is done or in process, the person who is reviewing the, the, the whole thing, uh, he, he would leave like uh, comments in Jira ticket itself, uh, as you can see here. And not only it was uh, uncomfortable to use because we had to um, 
copy the whole, whole like uh, code blocks uh, into into these comments and then uh, actually write some comments uh, on them and uh, yeah here is like a very simple example but actually sometimes it would be like a really long list of, of different uh, co uh, comments here and different like code blocks and it was really really noisy and uh, yeah Jira is actually used by pretty much everyone involved in the <clears throat> project so it's not only programmers it's some like, business people and then uh, whoever and they actually can leave also some comments uh, related to I don't know some some UI changes some business rule changes some business notes whatever and because of this code reviews uh, this would add a lot of unnecessary no noise to the mm, jury itself and um, uh, that's why it wasn't uh, it was like uh, acceptable and we used it uh, for uh, quite some time but uh, I personally never never completely liked this part of it like leaving the actual um, comments on code and yeah finally when the code review was done the ticket would be moved to to done uh, and we were using this process uh, for uh, code review for over two years uh, when I was working in this uh, desktop booking system and uh, for about a year in the in my current project the mobile booking system and uh, we only tried started using uh, AppSource about two months ago I guess uh, so and we are liking it a lot Mm, but yeah, maybe we are not using all the all the currently all the features, but we are going to. And um, that's all with the slides. I'm going to show you also how we set up our um, project in AppSource itself. And yeah, this is like our uh, our project. There are some additional stuff here. And um, yeah, like uh, as you can see, we're using Mercurial here. We connect to the uh, we actually been using Mercurial in Tallinn for several years. Several years already. Previously, we, had, we were using Subversion and it was very, very uncomfortable to use, very ugly. And at some point, we just um, looked at Git and Mercurial and actually thought that Mercurial is much more user friendly, as a, it's just e easier to use and has pretty much everything that Git has. And um, yeah, one thing actually that. Um, that we couldn't make uh, working properly, although we tried and really wanted to, is this uh, this code intelligence or code insight. Uh, yeah, here um, here is actually toggled, but the, the features are not working. The the documentation says that uh, that you have to to commit the, pretty much everything in the idea folder for this to work. Uh, previously, we actually had only code style settings commit committed to the repository, so we could share the code code style only but actually before this webinar we committed pretty much everything and still for some reason didn't, didn't it didn't work so yeah but i hope we actually some point make it working and finally there is a connection to jira and uh, the jira connection allows to to have stuff like uh, like this for example as i said before we are using this uh, uh, Jira numbers as the as a, a part of a commit message. So if the Jira is configured there, it's possible to just click the the link from here and open the ticket in uh, Jira. And uh, I guess that's about it for my part. But Anton is going to dive deeper into the um, actual usage and how the code review is currently done. So, yeah, do you hear me? Like, I really hope you do. So, yeah, from my part, I'm gonna like introduce myself. My name is Anton Kamisarov. I am a junior developer in Tallinn. Uh, I'm uh, participating in this project uh, almost at, from the very beginning. But this is the first project uh, that I will, I'm actually developing. Uh, I started it uh, in the previous May, and still today I'm being fully like included into development. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, jump into the uh, introduction of AppSource. 
Uh, the, uh, at first, I'm going to show you the review creation, uh, like from two points of like from two ways of to create a review in AppSource. First one will be uh, how to do it through the web interface, and the second one will be how to create it in through the IntelliJ IDE or any other uh, JetBrains uh, IDE. So yeah, uh, currently we are looking on the AppSource web interface. On the left side, you can see that there are like revision lists, all of the commits that were done uh, to your VCS. Uh, on the right side, uh, there is a new suite uh, where you can see all of the things that are happening in your project your, in, in AppSource. Uh, I usually do uh, apply a filter here. There's like a lot of different filters that can be applied to, to newsfeed. Uh, I apply this my filter, which uh, show me only show, show me only the things related uh, to myself that were like done to my reviews, where I am a author or a reviewer or a watcher. So yeah, uh, on the left side, as I said, there is a, a revision list. Uh, so I'm gonna jump into review creation uh, but first I need to uh, find a special uh, ticket for made specifically for this uh, webinar yeah there's also a possibility to apply a filter uh, to revision you're searching for like for example if uh, you apply this filter where like I am an author it will only display your commits uh, that were done by the by myself in this case so yeah but i'm gonna search for the ticket so yeah i would like to create uh, a review for this uh, uh, ticket that my fellow uh, teammates uh, have created so yeah the review creation in upsource is really simple you just like uh, find create review button press it and uh, review is created the only thing that is still missing in this uh, review is a couple of revisions, which we can easily add by pressing this revisions button, add revisions button, and there's a list of uh, revisions that we can simply add. Like add selected, wait a bit, and hit the refresh. So yeah, um, this is pretty much it for the review creation in uh, uh, web interface uh, I can also say that if you're creating a review uh, for somebody else it will automatically include you as a reviewer um, we're gonna come back to this uh, interface a bit uh, later I'm gonna remove this review to uh, repeat the same flow in Intel IntelliJ IDEA so I'm opening my IntelliJ IDEA I'm going to the version control log uh, so yeah I have already prepared um, this uh, ticket number in, in search for it. So yeah, there's two ways to create a review in uh, IntelliJ IDEA. First one is uh, I personally like, uh, the other one I'm gonna show a bit uh, later. So yeah, you just create, uh, select all of the revisions and uh, press right click, off source, review. Uh, you just need to wait a bit and it will offer you to either, yeah, let's, hope it's not going to take uh, too long so yeah if it takes too long i'm just gonna uh, skip uh, yeah the demo effect is in action yeah so yeah it currently it offers either to uh, include those revisions into an already existing review or if you press ok it's gonna create a new review you can uh, straight away change the title of review for example uh, we prefer to keep the the review titles the same are uh, as the um, uh, the same as the ticket uh, titles in jira uh, so yeah we I straight away replace the title then i can include reviewers and watches so yeah, I'm gonna add myself as a reviewer, press OK, and the review is created. And here we can already see the uh, review interface uh, in 
IntelliJ IDEA. So yeah, I'm gonna keep it. The last thing that I would like to show you on the review creation is the way that uh, most of my uh, fellow teammates are using, which like they found really convenient, is to, like I'm gonna show you an example. As soon as you do any kind of a change in the, in the file, uh, it appears uh, in the local changes and you can create a review on uh, commit. So you see there's a, this uh, review with op source. Uh, option. As soon as you like select this tick mark, uh, yeah, there's also an option to include this commit into the into existing review. Uh, yeah, as soon as you press this tick mark and commit the changes, uh, the review will be in the draft mode. Uh, as soon as you push it, it's gonna be uh, in the like active mode. I don't know how to name it. So yeah, I do not use this feature, but like most of my fellow teammates do. So yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it on the review creation. Like this is all, all, all the like possible ways that I know uh, how to create a review. So yeah, let's jump into review process in general. So yeah, we are currently located in the AppSource web page, and we're gonna go to this review column, uh, which uh, displays us uh, all of the reviews that are currently being uh, open in our project. So yeah, you see there's a filter applied here. So if we remove the filter, I'm gonna copy it beforehand. Uh, there will be all of the reviews that we created in our project will be shown here. Uh, we apply this filter, this uh, state open filter to like in our project, if the review is still open, it means that uh, the ticket is can still like, uh, it will, it can have uh, some changes like included to it, even if the review is, was accepted. So yeah, um, to explain what we are seeing here is like pretty simple. You can see those titles to review. Uh, they mean exactly what they say. So this to review title means that those three reviews are uh, for me like they're up for the taking. Like I need to uh, access them and like make a review for them. Outed by myself, uh, it displays the reviews that are being outed by me and other reviews, uh, which I like related somehow uh, to me or to any of our, our fellow teammates, but they don't need such a close attention anymore. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna open the review and yeah, I can mention that you see there's a, the font here is bold meaning that I'm never opened this uh, review. Like if you access, it's pretty. It's a pretty convenient feature. Uh, so like when you open the review list, you see that there's a review, uh, like uh, there's, a, there's a review that you never like saw before. So you can like really, it's really easy to navigate. So yeah, let's open the review. And uh, I'm gonna try to explain you what we are currently seeing here. So on the top, this is the basic uh, review information. This is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the review ID. Uh, this is the Jira ticket number, the Jira integration like highlights. Uh, if we press on it, it's gonna open, it, uh, open a Jira link. And this is the review title. Um, the important thing that I want to mention is this open in uh, ID uh, button, which if you press it, it will like open your review in ID, which is like pretty logical. Yeah, it's a really important thing for us and we use it all the time. Uh, revision, uh, all of these dots uh, mean, like each of the dots of these dots represent a commit that was made uh, for this review. So you can uh, either include a revision or exclude a revision. I'm gonna come back to that in just a moment. Um, three buttons, accept, raise a concern. In our case, accept means that there are no like uh, important changes needs, needs to be done to review and the ticket uh, from like code review point of view, uh, the ticket is ready. Uh, if you raise a concern, it means that uh, definitely a ticket needs at least some attention from, uh, from the author of the review. Either a comment needs to be uh, re re like uh, responded to or 
some uh, additional work needs to be applied. And the closer review, this is the final button that we press if the ticket uh, already, as, the, as Paul said, uh, most of our tickets needs to have an approval from uh, our testing engineer and from our UI UX guys who like uh, check all of the UI issues. And when the ticket is done in Jira, we close this ticket, close this review. Yeah, you will have this button uh, if you have the permission to have it. Yeah, review overview, meaning the authors are displayed here, reviewers, uh, revision lists, um, you can like look through all of the commits, the commits messages that were done here, and uh, the files here. And yeah, this is the review timeline. You can add all of the things that happened in this review will be displayed here. So yeah, I'm gonna jump straight into the review process, but like, uh, let's uh, get rid of some uh, uh, commits to avoid the noise from like in, in our review. So I have like a couple of revisions that uh, do not relate to the functionality made in the ticket. I can like you can I can easily. Uh, remove those revisions and uh, avoid the noise that is being uh, produced by, by them. So yeah, uh, the font, as you can see here, is also bold. It means the same thing that you haven't checked uh, the file yet. And the numbers here represent numbers like the plus nine number represents that there were nine lines added to this file and five lines were deleted. Pretty simple to understand. As soon as I open the file, font here becomes uh, becomes normal. And uh, let's explore the file we are currently seeing. So red uh, highlight, like red color, means that this line was deleted, green color that uh, this line uh, was added. Um, the side by side, there's like uh, two different options, like three different options. How you can uh, explore, like uh, investigate the file. It's either the default view, which AppSource provides, or if for some reason you are more familiar with side by side diff, like for which most of the IDE users are familiar with, you can like open the side by side view. And uh, view file option, which will just like, oops. Uh, which will open your uh, file that is being currently located in your VCS. I think that this feature is probably used because of this zigzag thing. Uh, so if you open a huge file uh, where there's like a lot of methods and like it's just a lot of code included in them, and there was a small change, most of the files will be like most of the code chunks will be collapsed, uh, and you can like understand it by looking on the zigzag thing. As soon as you press it, it expands the file, and you see like uh, rest of the things that uh, of sorts uh, like were hiding from you before. So yeah, um, let's. Uh, our in general, our review process is pretty simple. As uh, soon as you start the review, you just start to investigate file one by one, and uh, you try to understand what was done in the ticket and as if everything is all right you just press accept button if not uh, you press raise a concern button but it is not okay to just press a raise a concern button without like explaining what is the reason uh, for like this like to happen so we usually leave a comment on the uh, a place where we find something uh, inappropriate like some code style problems or some bug can acquire and uh, an old sort of commit also of the ticket when he will uh, go to, the, to his own review he will find a reason why the review wasn't accepted so uh, to show you an example of the flow uh, I'm currently located in the file and I see that there's a, a small problem uh, here you see there's a, only two equal signs Meaning that in our project we uh, there's a standard uh, that we always use the strict comparison in JavaScript. So I'm just leaving a comment writing that you should be triple equals instead of double equals, and then I and I add a comment. Um, 
the thing that happened is that this comment was added to the um, to the review timeline. So yeah, there's no noise as Paul explained in Jira ticket when you were like in looking into the comments that were left in Jira tickets There was a lot of things happening like the review guys were like UI UX guys were uh, leaving their own comments the uh, The UI the testers were leaving their comments and sometimes the business there was a lot of noise But here you can see only things related to the code, which is really convenient another thing that happened is uh, you see this small number one, uh, which means that there's uh, one discussion held in this file. So an author of commit who's gonna enter this uh, review, he will like easily orient where the discussions are being held. There's no need to like, that he can like easily access it. And another really important thing that happened is, uh, let's check which file was it, trial class selection run. So yeah. Uh, if we access this file, uh, we see that there is this upsource discussion mark here, over here and over here. So if you press on it, it will like highlight that this line have a discussion. So a note of commit or whoever is like included in our project, like a developer who access this file, uh, sees this discussion mark, which you can like easily hide if you like for some reason don't want to see them. And he can like read the discussion and understand that there's some business happening in the in in the file. And if the review for some reason was uh, closed and this discussion uh, was forgotten and wasn't solved, he can fix the the issue. And yeah, this feature I find really convenient. And sometimes uh, when I like work on a on a on a ticket and I pushed some of my changes and already uh, created a review for them. But uh, like, for example, I forgot I'm yet to add unit tests. Uh, I like explore the file and I see that there's a review already done for it. So I can like straight away uh, re resolve it or reply for it. Uh, you can leave a comment here, a reply for the comment here. And yeah. Um, in our usual workflow, as soon as the author commits, sees the uh, sees a comment, he makes some changes for it, um, commits uh, these changes. Like let's imagine that I made a commit, and as soon as it uh, the review is being updated, I get a mail that I need to pay attention. There some revisions were added, and if everything else is okay, I simply press accept button. So yeah, and for some reasons, I also need to leave a comment in Jira ticket. So yeah, that's pretty much it on the review process that we are following in um, in our project. The only thing that I can probably show you is um, the same functionality. A quick look look on the functionality in JetBrain in IntelliJ IDEA. So you can also like include exclude. Uh, files. Sometimes uh, I use this feature. Uh, yeah, you need to have this uh, upsource integration enabled in your ID. Another, and yeah, you can also explore the files the same way as you can do in the uh, web interface and like leave comments. Yeah, for uh, in, in like ID fans like myself, I find this feature like really convenient to use. So, yep, that's pretty much it from my side. Like, I think we're up for questions. Thank you, Pavel. Thank you, Anton. Uh, I think we've managed to answer most of the questions. Uh, but if you guys have any other questions, uh, um, I see there's more coming. So here's a question. Uh, can you guys talk a little more on the actual process that you go through from new code to review to production? Um, Anton, Pavel, who's going to answer uh, this? Yeah, I can try to answer that, but uh, I already mentioned that uh, pretty much. Uh, yeah, as I showed on my slides, like the, we use this Kanban, we split the, the, the whole like uh, story, development story into tickets, and then the tickets are moving on the board. 
and reviewed and uh, it goes to production when all the uh, tickets uh, involved in some story are finished. So we release like per story when the full story has all the tickets uh, reviewed by everyone, like code reviewed, UI reviewed, test reviewed, then we prepare a package and uh, release it. But uh, as for that, actually, I want to answer the next question as well. It's uh, how do you integrate with uh, continuous integration environment? Can I accept that you start the build? Uh, what we do actually, every uh, as we don't use the this pull requests, we actually everything that is pushed upstream makes it well to the main repository automatically. Um, so it, it actually means that some 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 pushes that can actually break the tests and everything. Uh, but every push starts the continuous integration process of, of for example, launching the test. We use Bamboo and, and starts uh, the uh, automated testing. We have unit tests, we have end-to-end -end tests. Uh, every push uh, mm, is detected by Bamboo and then it starts and runs all these tests. So it's not related directly to reviews in that sense. Mm. <clears throat> Um, there's one more question. Uh, do developers use feature branches? And how is the merge process going in that case? Um, yeah. Uh, as I said before, we uh, picked Mercurial. And one of the things that is annoying about Mercurial is that if you have uh, feature branches, named branches, they're called there, like uh, there are anonymous branches and named branches. And um, if you use name branches, it's almost impossible to get rid of them. You like can close them, but they are not never gone, because Mercurial uses this uh, concept of like never changing history. So you cannot like uh, merge and get rid of the name branch. It's going to be always present in the history. Uh, that's what that's one of the reasons that actually we use only um, one name branch in addition to default branch. It's called stable and we use it for release. It only contains all the release versions and it's tagged and everything. And the tag is the version of the release. So we actually use, instead of merging, we use rebase procedure and we are maintaining the linear history. It means if you did some development and you uh, have like a lot of commits locally and then you pull and there are some additional commits coming from other developers, what you do is actually not merge, but you rebase all your local comments on top of the last comment. This way, there is a very beautiful linear history, and I think it works really well. It works much better than having all these uh, branches and merging, and then it looks like a fir tree or Christmas tree. I don't know. We, we, we tried the, that, and we didn't like it at all. But uh, yeah, some people like might ask and say that in this way, it's uh, harder to to see the feature that is developed because it's not like grouped in a branch in a feature branch but as uh, you could have seen in and what anton uh, showed and also me is that we use the ticket number as the first thing and the comment message and this is how we can actually group all the comments by feature so we don't need feature branches for that we can just uh, group and search by some feature uh, meaning the feature that is uh, requested and then made in the Jira. So even having the linear history, it's very easy to see some feature. Thank you, Pavel. Um, there's another question. Uh, why do you wait with closing the review for the tests, UI, business uh, to be completed? From my point of view, code review should be separated from the tests. That's the question. So why do you wait uh, with closing the review for the test to be completed? Uh, I can, yeah. I can yeah. answer this question. Um, so the reason like we do not close the review until the, not it's not especially the test, it's UI and the testing. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's the test, sorry. Uh, because of the test or UI, there may be some changes applied uh, to the, ticket meaning that the review can be updated so like if for from the code like reviewer from the developer point of view everything is okay 
the test engineer can find an issue and because of this issue the, there will be another commit done under the same ticket uh, and it will update the upsource review meaning it will you know, like need a new uh, like a new 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 review for it so yeah that's the reason i'm going to add that uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense uh, creating um, another review for the same uh, sort of like feature or ticket in jira uh, that's why we don't close it uh, it's it, it makes much more sense because uh, as, as anton said like if even if the, someone reviewed the code and reviewed the functionality it doesn't mean that uh, he actually noticed all the for example like uh, ui problems maybe something is crooked and the developer just didn't pay attention to that because he was paying more attention to to some logic and code Um, another question, uh, I believe I can answer that. Uh, is there a possibility to view and upsource code quality or code test coverage metrics for projects? Um, so uh, uh, Anton and Pavel mentioned that there is a static code analysis that, that they uh, were not able to set up, so I'll be helping them with that later. Uh, as for test coverage, there is no such feature in AppSource, although recently it has been requested. But um, if you run um, some uh, code quality measuring uh, tests on your continuous integration server, test coverage uh, uh, tools in your continuous integration server, you can send uh, build results to AppSource uh, with, uh, there is a build endpoint, so AppSource can receive uh, such notifications from uh, continuous integration servers. So there will be a link to your build server for this particular change and how it affected uh, your test coverage. So it's not directly in app source, but it's possible to set up to uh, receive these results from uh, your continuous integration server. Um, as for the last question, uh, how do you see Jira that was created code review? Well, we actually leave comments in Jira, but uh, that's sort of like formality, so everyone, including the business, could see like there is some process going on, like a review process and everything like that. But actually, it's not that necessary because if you go to AppSource, you can see all untaken reviews and stuff like that. So it's very easy to see what needs what needs to be reviewed. Or from from web interface of AppSource or from IDEA even, so there is it's not that necessary to to connect the code review to Jira anymore like we did before, but yeah we still leave comments like uh, uh, like AppSource review was created here and give a link directly to the AppSource review, but that's just I don't know we think it's clear cl cleaner for everyone not 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 the coders only this way. Thank you very much. I think we don't have any more questions. So I would like to thank our presenters, our guests, for taking their time and sharing their story with us. Uh, it was very interesting to hear how you use AppSource. Uh, thank you all attendees for uh, joining us. And if you want to learn more about AppSource, you can go to www.jetbrains.com slash AppSource. And or follow uh, AppSource on Twitter, AppSource underscore JB. And have a good day.